In this video, we're going to look at the average distance a gas particle travels before it collides with another one, and that value is called the mean free path. So to look at this value, we're going to uh, use the following diagram below. We have a single particle here uh, whose nucleus is the green dot in the middle. And then we define some effective diameter of the particle, maybe, it, maybe it's some kind of van der Waals radius, something that just effectively defines a sphere which is considered uh, the particle. And that has a diameter which we'll call d. So then we're going to set up the following situation. We're going to have our particle uh, traveling with a velocity of u in this direction. And as it does so, it's going to be sweeping out this cylinder. And the cylinder has, the diameter of the cylinder is twice the diameter of the particle. And so that means as it's traveling along here, it has this cross section and it's sweeping out this cylinder that I've drawn here. And if while it's traveling, there's another particle that has its nucleus inside of the cylinder, then it's going to hit that particle and collide with it. And that'll be called a collision. And that's a hit. So, and if the nucleus of the other particle is outside the cylinder, then they're not going to overlap. They're not going to hit each other. And that'll be a miss. So we're concerned with the number of collisions or the number of hits that are going to occur in some given time frame as the particle travels and sweeps out this type of cylinder. Okay, so as I said, we're interested in the number of collisions that are going to occur uh, during some period of time. So we're going to define a quantity called dn call n collisions, number of collisions, and that is going to be the number of collisions that one given par gas particle has between t and t plus dt. So in the amount of time dt, how many collisions does a single particle uh, have? And it's actually a lot more straightforward than you might think to calculate that value because the number of collisions that we expect to occur in a given time frame, the way we've set up this diagram, that's going to be equal to the, the number of particles which are inside this cylinder, which is going to be equal to the total volume of the cylinder times the density of the gas. Okay, so we need a way to get at what these values are going to be. So conveniently, we've defined some quantities here. The cross-sectional area, the, the circular base here of our cylinder, is defined as sigma, which its, uh, its area is going to be pi times the diameter of the particle squared, pi d squared. And the length of the cylinder is going to be the amount of distance that the particle travels during the amount of time dt. So that's its velocity times time equals length. And that's the average velocity of a particle in the gas times dt. That's how far, how much time there is between t and t plus dt. Okay, so our volume then is going to be equal to a times h, volume of the cylinder, area of the base times the height which as we saw is going to be sigma times bracket u times dt. So taking that value for volume, we can substitute in up here for our number of collisions. So we expect that to be equal to, we're going to have cross-sectional area times density of the gas times average velocity of the, of the particles times the change in time. Okay, so now we want to see how many collisions occur during some given period of time. So we're going to define a quantity called Z, or ZA in particular, and that is going to be called the collision frequency. So collision frequency, as the name implies, is going to be the number of collisions we expect a given gas particle uh, to have in a given period of time. So ZA is conveniently going to be equal to the derivative of total number of collisions with respect to time, which as we can see here uh, is just going to be taking each of these sides here and dividing by dt. So we have our collision frequency equals cross-sectional area of our of our cylinder here, which depends on particle size. Density of the gas um, times, 
and then average velocity, which we know from previous videos, is going to be square root of 8 gas constant times temperature divided by pi times molar mass of the gas. This value was calculated in previous in previous video on the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. So that is an 8. Okay, so that is our collision frequency. But we made a fairly fairly benign assumption here. We assumed that our particle was traveling and all the other gas particles were fixed. And that's not true because they're going to be moving in motion relative to each other. Um, but using uh, some ideas that we developed uh, way back in the quantum playlist, uh, it's in the harmonic oscillator section about reduced mass, how you can effectively uh, express the relative motions of two particles relative to one another using uh, the quantity called the reduced mass. So what we need to do is any, any occurrence where we have mass in here, like molar mass, what we're going to have is our mass is going to be replaced by reduced mass. And the reduced mass for two particles is just equal to m1 times m2 over m1 plus m2. So it's the product divided by the sum. So when you have the special case that you have two particles which are equal in mass to each other, so when m1 equals m2, then you have the simplification that the reduced mass is just equal to half of the mass. So the reduced mass is just mass divided by 2. And additionally, to make a more clear cut, um, we can multiply both of these numerator and denominator by Avogadro's number and instead express this in terms of the Boltzmann constant and particle mass instead of gas constant and reduced mass. So this goes to 8 kT divided by pi and little m. So this is the m that we're going to replace by the reduced mass for our final answer here. So that means that our average reduced velocity, the velocity of particles relative to one another, is equal to the square root of 2 times the average velocity uh, according to this equation here, because we'll substitute in uh, m goes to mu, goes to m over 2. So taking the square root of that, our average velocity going back there gives us square root of 2 times the average velocity for the reduced velocity. All right, so our final result here, or relative velocity, I shouldn't say reduced velocity, I've, that's relative velocity. Okay, so our collision frequency is going to be equal to then is density of the gas times cross-sectional area of our part of our cylinder times the average relative velocity which is also equal to square root of 2 times average velocity so we're going to have the final result being square root of 2 density of the gas times cross-sectional area times the average velocity of the gas particles. Okay, so that is the collision frequency. That tells you how many, frequent, how many collisions occur per second. But we can also calculate how far does a particle travel before it gets into a collision. And that's going to give us a value which we're going to define as the mean free path. L is our mean free path, as the title of the video says. So in order to calculate L, it's a pretty straightforward transformation from uh, Z. So what we have is the, velocity, the average velocity of the particles divided by the collision frequency. So we know how frequently these particles collide with each other. So we want to know how far, uh, how much of a distance do we travel in between uh, Two, two given collisions on average. So that gives us that expression there. So we're going to have our average value of velocity divided by our collision frequency, square root of 2, sigma, or rho sigma u, 
those velocities cancel out, so it's going to be independent of velocity. So our final result is that our mean free path is going to end up being 1 over square root of 2 times the density of the gas times the cross-sectional area of our cylinder here. Okay, and then two more things that we can, one more thing we can bring into play before we go is that for an ideal gas, we know that PV equals NRT, and we know that uh, number of moles equals number of particles divided by Avogadro's number. Density is equal to number of particles divided by volume. So if you take all of these and substitute those values together, what you get is for an ideal gas, rho ideal, let me just use the abbreviation rho ID because I'm very short on space here. So our, our density of an ideal gas it's going to be pressure of the gas times Avogadro's number divided by RT, gas constant times temperature. So substitute that in. So for an ideal gas, we, our final result is that the mean free path, the average distance traveled between collisions for an ideal gas particle is going to be RT divided by square root of 2. Avogadro's number, cross-sectional area, times pressure. Okay, so that's our result. So as the temperature gets, gets higher, our average distance that our particles travel between collisions goes up. They travel further before colliding with one another because they're traveling faster. And at higher pressures, there are more particles around because our density goes up as the pressure goes up. So the higher the pressure it is, the less distance particles travel between collisions.